I, I don't like it. But I don't like it either, but. But that's why you didn't go with it. Ice T in Correct. the building, the lady version. How's it going, Miss Lady? <laughs> Everything is going great. All right, all right. So, again, thank you for coming on to the show and uh, sharing some of your experience with us. Uh, Thanks for having me. Ah, not a problem. So, where are you at in this part of the world? I'm um, on 49 South, now Market 121, heading to Baton Rouge. I'm in Kansas right now. Oh, okay, okay. So, you're heading to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yeah, that's where I live at now. Oh, you stay in Louisiana? Yes, I moved down um, September. Okay, because your phone says you're from New York. So that's where you was born and raised, or you just got your phone from No, no, (laughs) no. I used to live there, but I was born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama. And um, my sister moved us to New York uh, when my mother passed away because my dad was a truck driver. Okay. So my sister uh, raised uh, me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. So your mm-hmm. father, so your father was a truck driver. So was was that your inspiration in getting into in the in the truck driving? Yes, because I thought I was a boy growing up. Oh hell no, 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 you didn't. <laughs> you, you, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. You you far yes, from I did. you far from looking <laughs> looking like a boy growing up, man. I mean, you know, I you, wanted to do everything like a boy. Everything like a boy. Well, I'm. When I'm, I was growing up, I. <laughs> well, I'm. I'm glad that. Uh, I'm. I'm glad the 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 feminine side came out on you. You stayed feminine. <laughs> you know. I mean Thank that. You. I mean, you know, that could be that. That could be a reason for some people to to, to convert. I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, no shots fired, and I'm not trying to. <laughs> I'm not trying to, you know, to hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that. That I may had that that may had converted over, you know, I'm just saying. But uh but, but uh growing up, uh, you know, I, I tell you what, let's start from there. Let's uh let's hear your story. Uh what, you know, before you got into before you got into trucking and everything, what did you used to do? Um I was a manager at uh, Burger King, and <laughs> which I started driving trucks when I was 18. So I was an assistant manager at Burger King, and I said when I get old enough, I was going to start driving trucks because when I was five years old, I used to watch my dad drive his truck in and out of the yard, and my kindergarten was right next to his yard. And my mom asked me, because I wouldn't go back in the class if I seen my dad's truck. And my mom asked me, do you want to go to school or do you want to ride with your dad? And I said, I want to ride with my dad. So I was actually a kindergarten dropout because I wanted to ride with my dad. Yes. That, but, you know, you know, know what? That, that had to be, that, that had to be. That had to be something for your classmates to see at a, at a young age when they see your when they see your pops rolling up in that big semi. How how did that make you feel yeah. when your other classmates was like? <gasps> oh, listen! I felt like I was on top of the world. My dad was doing something their parents couldn't do. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yo, 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 dad, yo, yo, dad works for a factory. My dad drives for a living. (laughs) Ooh. (laughs) Yeah. Yep, he was definitely my inspiration. And then my brothers, um, they was drivers also. But if I tell you, I mean, I, I, it it took me a while. Mm Mm-hmm. To really get used to out here. I mean, back in the day when I started, um, they didn't want females out here. How, you know, so, you say back in I the mean, you say back in the day. When when did you start in the, driving? In, in the eighties. In the eight, oh, so you got your so so you got your CDLs back in the eighty. There was no CDLs in the eighties. It, it was chauffeur's license. license. Yep, sure was. Yes. 
Did you have to did did you have to go through did did you have to go through school or did you have to go through any of the stuff that we have to go through now for our CDLs slash no. chauffeur's license? No, they grandfathered everybody in that was already driving. Okay, okay, okay. So what what was mm-hmm. the exper- what was the experience like getting your chauffeur's license? Oh, now was- let me now let me preference this. Now, chauffeur's license at that time, meaning that you could drive passengers, right? You could drive passengers or you can drive a semi. Now, all of that was before the split, or let me rephrase that, before the separation. Now it's class A. Correct. And class A, you can drive just about anything, including passengers, but then they had to put the endorsements and all like that. But when you got your license... When you got it, correct. You you didn't have to go through all that endorsements, no. passengers, and all like that. Talk, tell no. me, tell us how, uh, tell us how was it, how how was it to get your license, uh, your chauffeur's license back in the day? Just walk in there with your ID and tell them you want a chauffeur's license. Wow! And you would pay. I think it was like twenty five dollars. You'll pay twenty five dollars to have that put on your driver's license and you was able to drive anything on the road. Wow, that simple. Twenty twenty yeah, that simple. Twenty five dollars add chauffeur's license and I could mm-hmm. drive I, I, I can drive either a big rig or I can drive a passenger bus. Correct. Just, just like that. Just like that. Man, it was so can it be so simple? Why it was so simple then? <laughs> why it uh, was so simple then? Why why mess up? Why why do you think something so simple back then is so complicated now? Money, oh, greed, oh there we go, control, oh there we go. So I mean, if you have control over other people's money, how much they can make. I mean, I would do the same thing if I was the government. Oh, you wrong. <laughs> you know I'm lying. You know I'm lying. <laughs> you say, if I was the government, I'll do the same. You know what? If we, And to be honest, it's a lot of shit that the government do that we don't understand. But we, we, we could play armchair quarterback all day. But if we was actually in no, that no. damn position, we wouldn't, mm-hmm. know what to, we wouldn't know what to do. You know, back in the day, it was a brotherhood. It was a sisterhood. It wasn't a lot of women out there, Mm -hmm. but we still look out for each other. The government in the beginning of the CDL was not bad. It Mm -hmm. wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. It just all we had to do was just get, you know, the endorsements. That was it. Mm -hmm. But we were still able to run our log books any way we want, as long as we didn't get caught. So it was it was so simple back in the day, and then all of a sudden, all of these truck drivers is once the CDLs came out, then it seemed like it was wreck after wreck after wreck, vehicle to manslaughter, all of this like crazy. Do you? Do you? And then here comes all the sanctions. Do Do you think uh, when when the change of the CDLs that that brought out a different breed? Well. In different eras, because you you drove in the eighties, mm-hmm. early nineties, and then you saw the change. Mm-hmm. You saw the change in the era around late nineties, early two thousands, and then you see the change once again, especially coming up February second, uh, February seventh. Right. I'm sorry, with the changes again, you you see all the different eras, all the different levels of trucking. Do you think correct? Right. Doing those, doing those particular errors brought out a different breed of truck drivers. Um, what it brought out to me, this is just my opinion. Okay, there we go. Back in the day, the eighties and the and the early nineties, drivers loved to work. They loved their jobs. Mm-hmm. Going into the mid and the late nineties, it started becoming it's just a paycheck. They didn't mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. The 2000s, they really don't care. I call them assembly line truck drivers 
because all they're doing is going through the school two weeks, jumping out here, killing and everything else. I'm sorry. That's just me. Don't get me wrong. There are some older drivers, you know, that's out here, you know, doing some crazy stuff also. But back in the day, it was the love of the job. Now it's the love of the money. Mm. If you love only that money, you got to be careless. Mm. That's just my opinion. That's what's up. I, I wish I had a bomb. Well, I'll add that. I'll add that bomb drop. Uh, man, uh, ice tea, man. So, so back then, back back then, you said it wasn't that many that that many women coming into the into the industry, and the reason yeah. and the reason why you came into the industry is because you know your father inspired you to inspired you to get into the truck you run out with your father you drove with your father you seen what your father went through and all like that and you mm -hmm. just pretty much got a love for it did your father was the one that you know that taught you at an early age on how to how to drive the truck and everything no he didn't want me to be a truck driver oh. i went against his wishes <laughs> I became a truck driver. My father didn't speak to me for three years because he was so upset that I became a truck driver. What? Yes. No. He didn't want, I'm the, wait a minute, I'm the last of 10. I'm the baby girl. Okay. So he didn't want his baby girl to be a truck driver. No. And he, and, and he just <laughs> went in his feelings for a whole three years? Yeah. My dad, I mean, he would, hey, and keep on going. It was never you know, like how it used to be or anything like that, but yeah, he, I mean, I understood where he was coming from, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of men, especially, you know, my father, you know, being born in the, you know, my father was born in um, 1921, mm. so my father was old to, to the max. This was to the max. He didn't feel that women needed to be out here, but once I got out here, and my sister, my other sister, I had three, two more sisters that used to drive trucks. Mm -hmm. Once we got out here, my father was one of the proudest men you could ever see. Okay, okay, that's what's up. He, he enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, my baby daughter, you know, this. My he, had to, he had to adapt. I mean, that's what he had to yes. do, right? He had to adapt. Yeah. Just like all these other old school drivers. Sorry, y'all, but y'all gotta adapt to the times, man. <laughs> women is women is coming out and uh and and doing their thing. You know, well, uh, some women, not all of you guys. Yes. I'm just saying. Shout out to the to the ones that is that's that's on the for real truck driving whoop, whoop. On, on the truck driving shit. I mean, on the truck driving shit. But <laughs> but for the ones that's just on that. On yeah, uh, no comment. Anyway, okay. anyway, well, I, can I say it? Yeah, can go, I say it? Yes, yes. Go ahead. For the truck drivers that all they want to do is drive trucks like they're lockless on eighteen wheels, down to they boots and they put on on TikTok. Y'all are disgusting. Oh my break. God! You say <laughs> lot. You say lot lizards on six on eighteen wheels. I Ooh. did. No, you didn't. <laughs> Yeah, I did. You, you, you didn't say lot lizards on 18 wheels. Mm. Yes, I did. All right. They hey, take their bed with them. Hey, <laughs> oh, take their bed. Oh. <laughs> hey, listen, y'all. Listen, the, the <laughs> thoughts and views of, of Ice T is not the thoughts and views of the Lockout Men podcast show. Let's continue. <laughs> All right, so back, okay. <laughs> so back then, man, back then, coming into the game back in the late '80s, you said it wasn't that many women mm -hmm. out there. So, what did you guys? What were some of the challenges that you guys went through? I I know, like you know, how how was it uh, for showering? How was it for getting that that respect? Uh, how was it fueling back in the day for you? Uh, back in the late '80s. Okay, so let's go with the showers. The showers was the most disgusting. They didn't have female showers. Mm -hmm. So you would literally have to have somebody to stand outside of the door and watch while you take a shower. It was it was bad. Wow. It was really, really it, it was disgusting. Um, the showers we have today that's really disgusting is clean compared to the showers back in the day. Mm. 
so we already knew back then that we had to wear shoes mm -hmm. in the showers. Mm -hmm. I know a female's bad because I know I did. Mm -hmm. and it, you, was, it was terrible. And you said you literally had to have somebody to stand guard. It wasn't no locks or nothing like that? No, because they was men. Wow. It was men showers. So, what did, so a lot of those places, huh? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So a lot of those places, you know, a female go in there and it's like, you know, you go pay for your shower and you just walk in there. It was like a swinging door. So y'all had to so pay. That's how. Y'all had to pay for showers back in the day, too? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was hear, only like $5. Y'all hear that. Even though it's, it costs now, but y'all here, they used to pay for showers back in the day, too. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. so what other what, what other challenges that you guys met? Well, for me, it was when somebody would see that I was a female driving. I've had um, balloons of oil thrown on my windshield. I've had snakes put on my catwalk. It was, I've had a guy that literally told me to get out the industry. It was scary back then. Ooh. How did you, man how, it was really scary. How did you manage through uh, Ice-T? I, <laughs> I stopped going to the truck stop only to through. That was it. I wouldn't sleep in the truck stop anymore. And a lot of the truck stops back then was dirt lot anyway. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it wasn't safe. It was not safe at all for a lot of women to be out there on the road by themselves. Mm -hmm. So the day because so we literally had guys. Oh, go ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead. You you was about to say I didn't mean to cut you off. So all of the stuff that we had to go through. I mean, you talk about carrying machetes, uh, sawed off shotguns. We had to do a lot of stuff to stay protected back then. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy. So back, now, since you mentioned that, uh, since you mentioned mm -hmm. that that you you was able to carry weapons, that the, the the company that you was driving for at the time didn't have an issue with you carrying a weapon on your truck for protection. Oh, they didn't know. They did not know. Mm -hmm. You couldn't carry a weapon, but I was a, and I'm gonna say it like this: I was a a young black female out there on the road by myself. So I had to have some protection. You had to have some protection, exactly. Um, and, now, and now that you, you know, you stopped going to the truck stops and now like that, what was some of the, what was some of the issues that you probably might have had with some of these shippers and receivers out here? Uh, not wanting to accept that a female just uh, drove in and knocked on the door. I mean, I really had loads back in the day uh, refused to have somebody else to come. Um, I even had to take loads back because shooters didn't want me to be on their premises. It was crazy. Mm. People didn't think that prejudice was out that bad mm -hmm. back then, but, you know, it was a lot of undercover, but a lot of those mom-and-pop warehouses that I had to go to, they would refuse the loads. Simply because, because you was a, because of your color and the fact that you was a woman. Correct. Wow, they they wasn't showing you guys no kind of love back in the day, man. When 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 do you when do you think you know throughout the duration of of your trucker life? When do you think all of that started to change, or has it changed? <laughs> the turning down the load has changed. But all of the other negativity toward your gender and your color, that is still out there. Mm, that is so it's, sad. It's still out there. That is so sad. I mean, I go through it at least once a week out here on the road. And I just laugh and I tell them, I said, well, if you don't want to load or you don't want to get me out loaded fast, I said, I can sit here because I'm going to be making $51 an hour. I can go to sleep. I still make money. <laughs> then all of a sudden, when you tell them that you got to still make money, then they want to get on the door. Mm. They they not now they want you to get up out of here real quick, huh? Mm, yep. All right. So now, 
you you've been in the game for a long time. Uh, we we looking at we looking at at least three decades. Correct. Man, Ice T, I ain't realize you was that old, man. I mean, li- listen to this. Li- listen, listen. Uh, uh, oh, 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 okay. I'm over here. my age. I'm, I'm over here. I'm over here looking at this. Uh, looking at this little. This little five foot nut and with 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 the soft voice, I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking at least maybe ten in the game. We 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 decades deep. How did you? Uh, yes. I, oh man! So since you've been driving for a long time, how was your how, how was your dating life? Like how? What did you get? Did you get married to a trucker? Did 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 you put yourself out there for, for a relationship? How? How was a okay. relationship okay. scene for, for a female driver back in the day? Uh, well, I was married. Oh, okay. And uh, it did not last because basically I was a truck driver. Oh, okay. Um, so that is so true. So after the marriage, I went to, I was in a long relationship for 13 years with another. And um, it was like a candy store for him. My woman's gone, so I'm doing this and that and blah, blah, blah. Wow. And my recent relationship, which I just broke up with my uh, fiancé, um, he was a truck driver, so I put him in the truck with me so we can run team. Mm-hmm. And um, he was texting his woman while I was in the bunk sleep. Hey? Hey? Yes. Hey? It just happened Monday. Hey. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait, hey. wait, 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 wait. How did how did you find out? Well, yeah. How did you find out? Because I was in the bunk and I needed to get up. And so I sat up on the bed. When it was I mean the uh curtains wasn't drawn. Okay. So I could see everything up front. So he's driving and texting her while I'm sitting on the bunk and he did not know that I was sitting up. So, so I just want not, to lay not, back down. Not, 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 okay, so th- here's a lot of things wrong with that picture. A lot of things mm-hmm. wrong with that picture. Number number one, I'm, I'm just going to say, number one, brother man, you did not look back. You could have at least looked back and seen your woman sitting up, and you could have been like, hey, babe, what's going on? How you doing? And, and slide that phone up under your seat. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's that's number one. Number two, you mm-hmm. doing deadly things, bro. You 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 testing while you're driving. That's 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 a big no no right there, my G. That's that's a right. big no no. I mean, you know, you got somebody else in the bunk. You got somebody else's mm-hmm. life in your hand, and you're testing and driving, G. And then and overall, yeah. you 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 testing another female while you have a female. Who does that? Bro, you should have took your well, ass to the shower. This is mm-hmm. what you should have did. If you want to be on some sneak shit, you should have took your ass to the shower, did all your shit in the shower, and then mm-hmm. come back and then and, and left it alone. But continue. I'm just saying. So I did my little investigation. He gets out of the truck. I go through his phone. Yes, I did. And I copied all well snapshot all of the messages and i mean i was devastated i was devastated because the stuff that he was saying to her about me was untrue but i understand when a man is having an affair with another woman Mm -hmm. he he wants that woman to think that he's in a bad situation exactly this man was not in a bad situation i was getting ready to buy this man a truck for christmas what uh, bro, yes. you fucked all that up, bro. That's, you, you, you fucked that all up. And bro. when I read that he wanted her wrapped in a blue bow for Christmas, mm-hmm. I was floored because I had paid an extra hundred and fifty dollars to have his truck wrapped in a blue bow. Oh. So no, mm-hmm. no, it was it devastated me. I I've been having sleepless nights, you know, right about now, but. I have all the evidence I and, need. And, and, um, all, and all this while he was on your truck. Correct. Man, 
I, I am so sorry to hear that. No wonder you made your oh, TikTok. Nice. You you made a recent TikTok. Hey y'all, I'm single. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so silly. listen, Ice T. I, I gotta ask you. I, I gotta ask you because you know I ask all my all my female guests this question, and especially when they have a a, a nice little following uh, on social media. Um, mm -hmm. How 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 is how does how does a good guy? How does a nice guy? How does a guy, you know, that might be interested in you? go through all of the rhetoric and all of the bullshit to get your attention because on I mean you know for all female drive and this is across all platforms TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all of them. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a whole bunch of guys that's going to come into your thing, "Hey, I can do this for you. Hey, I'm that guy for you. Hey, you look good. Hey, beautiful. Hey, the the googly mm -hmm. eyes and all like that." How do you how do you muster all of that garbage that's in your inbox, that's in your DM, that's in your messenger? How do you how do you navigate through all of that stuff to find or for that one guy to find you? Um, I don't want one of the guys over there. Mm. Because TikTok to me is like a dating site. It's, it's not for fun anymore. It's like a dating site. It's like a bullying site. Mm. It's like dissing another person's site. It's, it's just unreal. And so how can you know if this person is going to end up being like the one I got? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't bring my past into my future. I don't know if you've seen that one. Mm -hmm. I do not do that. Mm -hmm. But if you get on TikTok and you DM me or you even make a video talking to me indirectly wanting to get with me, I can't trust you on that because you could have did the same thing to other females. Mm. So, so that, I can't so, huh? so you saying so you 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 in agreement with me that uh social media uh social media dating is is kind of out. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Man, well, yeah. Ice T, I I am so sorry for that happening to you, and I I, you know, I, and I'm looking at you, guy. You 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 really fucked that up, bruh. I mean, if you were supposed <laughs> to be on some ill shit, some some sneak shit, some slash shit, bro, you should have just you you should have just went on here and did the shit on the slide, my nigga. You, that's you wrong, bro. You wrong, and you messed up a whole good thing. You. You had a woman that was into you. You, not 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 to say that you know to take advantage or anything like that, but still, you you had a woman that you wanted for nothing. Hey, babe, I need about a thousand dollars. Can you hook me up with that? Yeah, no problem, bro. What? what That's the exactly fuck? what was happening. Bro, what the fuck, man? And and and, and that kind of question, like, like when you get a woman like like Halle Berry. How the fuck do you mm -hmm. cheat on Holly Berry, bruh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you cheat on... Oh, that's on... not the killing part. Man. The woman he cheated on me with is married. And, and and don't even look good at all. Mm. Oh, baby, don't have me to post a picture on oh, my own okay. TikTok. Okay, now. Okay, now. All right, so... 30 decades in the game. Have you, have you, ever, have you ever been... Um, have, have you ever been... Well... How many trucking companies have you have you worked for, and have you ever been fired from any one of them? Uh, I worked for five trucking companies. Five. And yes, yes. Five. Correct. In thirty, uh, I mean, in three decades, you only worked for five. Correct. Correct. Okay. In the midst of all of that, have you? Been an mm -hmm. owner operator. Yes. Okay, then the five shall stand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Have, have you ever been? Have you ever been terminated from any of them? Any of the five? Um. Yes, I was uh, terminated because 
I ran the run over a dispatcher. A what? I was a dispatcher. I was on my way to um, Birmingham. Uh oh. It sounded like you breaking up. Uh oh. I think I lost you. Hello? <laughs> Oh, Hello. There, there you go. You're back. Hello. Yeah, you're back. Go ahead. Okay. So I was in place for me. I got a phone call that my son was sick. So I tell the dispatcher that I was going to stop in Birmingham. She said, "No, this is a hot shot load." Mm -hmm. I said, "My son comes first. And she, this woman, literally said, "You do what the f I tell you to do." Oh no. I said, you "Really now?" So I turned the truck around. Mm -hmm. I was heading back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Mm. I and I called her back and I said, "B, I will be there in two hours. Mm. I'm going to run your A over." Mm. So when Here I arrived come. there, they had um, the the sheriff department there. That, let me see, I think it was like two sheriff cars, two police cars, and then they had security at the gate. They refused me to come in, and they told me just drop the trailer. I was terminated uh, yeah. because I did a threat. Mm. But nah, nobody, no, no, nobody don't tell you that. Don't no, mm -mm, no, you don't tell the black woman that. Mm -mm. No. So I won't be in so much pain while I'm driving. And so they taught me how to do it. So even as I'm talking to you, I'm meditating on the pain in my leg. Okay. When I'm driving, I'm meditating. So this person taught me how to meditate even while I'm distracted doing things. Okay. I feel no pain, but Lord, when I stop this truck, that's a whole different ball game. Uh, you say it's a whole different. Did you do? You gotta put some. You gotta put some. Uh, some icy hot on that bad boy. Listen, my hands be rubbing for hours. <laughs> hours. Uh, I mean, my leg be so swollen and it be like throbbing so bad, and it only happens when I stop. How That's long, because my medication is broken. How long ago was the accident? The accident was in 2008. Wow. And again, well, a after the collision between you and the other female, what, what happened to her? Uh, she, uh, I think her arm was broken and her hip was broken. That was it. I was the one that got the, the worst the, the the blot of, of it. it. Was, yeah. Did, did y'all know each other? Yes. Oh, okay. So y'all was riding buddies, pretty much. Correct. Correct. So what is so is is the correlation between trucking and and motorcycling is the same? Because every time I turn around, I mm -hmm. see somebody that's a truck driver, but in their driveway mm -hmm. or in their garage, they got a motorcycle too. Okay. So you want to master everything, okay? I'm ma I, I, you cannot master. Let me let me rephrase that. There is no such thing as mastering anything because you're steady learning every day. Right. So you're not mastering anything. Okay. So when you're a truck driver, okay, so you got this down pat. Right. Okay? Right. So now the ultimate thing is you got 18 wheels. You got four wheels. The only thing to go is the two wheels. So I started from the four wheel mm -hmm. to the eighteen wheel mm -hmm. to the two wheel. That's how I did it. I've been driving bikes since I was twenty one. So did you did <clears throat> back then? Well, now you got to get a motorcycle's license. Did did you have to go through all of that to get a motorcycle license too, or since you already had your CDL, you was already grandfathered in? They when when they grandfathered me in, they gave. Everybody full endorsement motorcycle. The only thing they didn't give you endorsement for was the boat and fish. I mean, and um, and fishing. But you got every endorsement that required a motor, wow. and I got all of the endorsements. Yes. Wow, y'all got lucky. The fuck? Yes. I, I had to pay five over five thousand dollars for my shit plus an plus an extra. 800 for some motorcycle like man come on get out of here see i should have got my license back then like i started to yeah, graduate graduated have. graduated out of high school back in the 80s and should have got it back then so you so after the so let me ask you this 
after the uh-huh. a- after the accident and you got back into the truck, you're you you mm-hmm. can you still drive a, a a a stick? Can you still drive a stick or? I can still drive a stick, but it will put more pressure on my left leg. Yeah. So I can drive a stick as long as I don't get in traffic. And you know we're gonna get in traffic. Exactly. Now let me ask you. Now let me ask you this. Coming from an old, you know, coming from an old school driver, you're a veteran. You, 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 three decades in the game. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about? I, I and I know you got two separate feelings. So back then, when you was driving a manual, how did you feel? Mm-hmm. And how do you feel about automatics now? Okay, I never drove an automatic until now. So this was my first automatic truck. Okay. So how I would have felt about an automatic back in the day, and I can't say the words that I usually tell people, but I would say anybody that drives an automatic was a T. <laughs> Bottom line. <laughs> that was my feelings back then. Mm-hmm. So now that I was put into a situation to where I have to have an automatic, I recant that T. Right. You know, is is it uh, the automatic is beneficiary for certain people, mm-hmm. people that don't know how to uh, give she you know give uh, shift gears. This is the perfect thing. That's the reason why these companies are going to automatic because these new drivers are tearing up these motors. They tearing them up. So okay, well we'll we'll fix this. We'll put you in an automatic. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why they came out with the license automatic only. Mm-hmm. You know, when you do your license. But you couldn't have told me back in the day before I had my motorcycle accident that I was going to be driving an automatic. You couldn't have told me that. I wouldn't, I would have told you you were lying. You said, you, no. you said the devil was a lie back then, huh? Yes, it was a lie. <laughs> I mean, my first, my first stick was a general. Mm hmm. And a general, if you remember back in the day, the generals, they had two gear shifters. So I had to shift gears, drive, clutch, all of that at the same time. You had to put one arm through one steering wheel, I mean, you know, through the steering wheel, and shift the gears. You're shifting the gears simultaneously is basically what I'm saying. Wow. So you had to do so. You did, When you started, you was in the cab over. So you... Correct. And 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 them cab overs was the ones that had those multiple stitches, man. That's crazy. No. I didn't have that cab over, so I don't know about that. Uh huh. But the general looks it's a it's a uh it's a hood. Mm-hmm. If you look it up on the internet and go back I don't forgot what year it was, I think it was like a uh a eighty seven or something like that, maybe maybe an 80, but it had two gear shifters in there. And that was my first um, time ever driving a double stick. Now, me and my guy, D Nitty, shout out to D Nitty. He says that if cab overs was still available, there wouldn't be as many truck drivers there as today. Do you agree with that statement? No, I don't, because I wish I can get a cab over right now. Cab overs is the bomb. But no, that's no if no people, no. That's what I was saying. If there was if there was cab overs now, do you think right. there would be as many truck drivers on the road if cab overs was still a thing? If they yes, I do. <laughs> I do. That's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. For the simple reason why a cab over to me, you can do a lot more with a cab over to me. Dress it up, stretch it out. And if you get these newbies trained on a cab over, train them on a cab over, then they would be scared to go into a hood. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I would prefer a cab over over a hood, but that's just me. That's what's up, man. So I think, that it, I think it would still be a lot of drivers driving if they had more cab overs out here, which there's some gorgeous cab overs out here, and I would love to get a whole... You know, to like a 19, ooh, I'm going to say 75 cab over. I would love to restore that, baby. Okay, that's what's Gorgeous. up. That's what's up, man. And, so, hook, and hook it up on the West Coast. Yes. That's what's up, man. All right, so Ice-T, three decades in the game. I, mm-hmm. I am just so flabbergasted of 
of your experience and how long you've been how long you've been driving, man. I am I am at I am at all right now. So Aww. so back then, back you know, back then, you know, coming up in the game, what was all the you know, throughout the three decades, throughout the eras, have you, you know, have you now you've been in a terrible motorcycle accident, but Correct. Have you ever been? Have you ever been in a in a in a trucking accident? And if not, have you ever seen an accident that kind of that kind of said to yourself, "I chose the wrong profession." Okay, yes, I've been in a um, major accident with an eighteen wheeler. It was my fault. I would tell anybody that. And uh, every accident that I see on the road, I question myself because I do want to go home. What was, but my, hmm? uh, I was about to say, what was the what was the accident that you was in? I was being greedy. Um, I took a load out to El, El Paso and I picked up a load in El Paso and the broker told me that they would pay me a hundred. I mean, two hundred and no, it wasn't. It was twenty five hundred dollars more if I got that load there basically overnight. Now, I had just drove there almost straight from Birmingham. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, $2,500 more? And he was like, yeah. He said, I, you know, you have to check, you have to get you now if you want it. And so I was like, I said, cool. So I go to the truck stop, picks up the money after I got loaded. I take off, I'm rolling. I get right there at the Virginia, right there just before you come into Richmond. I'm looking at the plant and I collapsed. I didn't even know I fell asleep. And I, and I tore the whole undercarriage of my truck off. Everything was sitting up front, and my and um, my truck, the undercarriage was back behind me. So it ripped everything apart. And this place, I usually deliver to at least once a week. So they seen the accident, so they got two yard jockeys to come out there, and they literally drug my truck to the yard got the trailer, put it on the door. Then they call the police. The police comes out there because I did get hurt. Mm-hmm. And they told him that I had the accident on the yard. The police looked at my truck and he was like, this happened on. Shout and out so, to them. Damn. Right yeah. So I didn't have to pay for the damage that I did to the, um, to the highway. Woo. Because I, they said I had the accident on private property. <laughs> wow. Shout out to that company, man. I, I don't know if anybody would do that today, but man, shout True out to that. that to, shout out to that company. And you, um, how, how long you was in the hospital? What was you in the hospital or, or, or no? No, I didn't go to the hospital. The paramedic, um, popped my thumb. Mm-hmm. Cause both of my thumbs was like bent back. I didn't even know it. My nails was ripped off, um, and I just had to wear a neck brace. And believe it or not, I drove with the neck brace. Wow. Uh, were you still with the company after the accident? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was my truck. So oh, I mean, it was your truck. Oh, okay. Was, okay. Right. The load wasn't damaged. The okay. trailer wasn't even touched. But like I said, my the the cab of the truck was up here, and the body was back there. The um, chassis was back there. Wow! So they just drug it. They unhooked the trailer, mm-hmm. got the trailer, took it to the yard, drug my truck there, mm-hmm. and the insurance paid to have it rebuilt, to have it put back together. Okay, that's what's up, man. Well, I am glad that you're here, man. It, woo, man. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it, yeah, it's you know when the brokers kind of like trying to entice you to do something more, yeah. Sometimes it probably might be better to be like, nah, I'm gonna have to take a pass on this one, bro. <laughs> see, back then I was young, naive, you know, thinking about that money. That I was just paper chasing, like it was, it was nobody's business. You know, the low was already paying me three, and you're going to offer me another 2500 to get it there overnight? Yeah, I'm going to try it. Okay, that's... I, I, won't do, I won't do it again, though. I hear you. I hear you. So, 
Ice-T, you, you know, I, I found you on TikTok, and it seems like since, I'll say, 2020, maybe 2019, um, mm-hmm. the, you know, the app came in existence back in the late uh, 20, 20, whatever. Mm-hmm. It came in existence, mm-hmm. and it was a, you know, kind of like an app that was made for, for kids and, and for teenagers, you know, one of the maps that, you know, that you can lip sync and all like that. And, you know, something like a Snapchat type deal for kids. But a lot of a lot right. of adults now came over and and pretty much took over the app. And then there's a whole right. heap of a uh, whole heap of truck uh, truck drivers now that's that's all over the app. Would you know, I, out of all the social media, you know, YouTube, Instagram. Why why mm-hmm. TikTok? Okay, so who says that it was uh geared for young people? Any app that comes on the internet is geared for all ages. Mm-hmm. And as far as truck drivers getting on there, it is the best way for other truck drivers to see what other truck drivers are doing out here on the road. What mistakes this truck driver is doing, don't do it. <laughs> so basically giving advice. I mean that's what I do. All right, that's what's up, and that and and to be honest with you, that's what I see you do. I I don't see you doing none of the, none of the TikTok trends, none of the, none of the TikTok garbage that I've seen that I that a lot of other drivers, uh, do on this app, man. And right, and, and TikTok itself is is uh, well, that's a whole another conversation. Uh, that is true, but uh. But you you decided to come on there just to you know just to talk and chill and 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 just show what you know just show what you do on that app. Correct. All right, that's what's up. Are you on any other social media? Are are you on YouTube? Are you on Instagram? No, I'm on Instagram, but I don't post really to Instagram, and I'm on Facebook. I really don't go there. Uh, Facebook is more messy than TikTok is. So I don't go there. And any other website, WhatsApp, I don't do WhatsApp. So it's just mainly um, TikTok. Was you, was you the one that did the video on the driver running over the cones? Was that you? I don't think that was you. Driver running over the cones? No. No, I, I don't think that was you. I think that was, uh, I, no, that was Truck Diva. Truck, trucker Diva. A Diva Truck. Mm. I think that was her. I think that was her that made a video of a tr- of mm-hmm. a truck driver going over the uh over the uh over the stuff. All right. Well, Ice T, thirty years in the game. What do you think? What do you, out of your thirty out of, out of your thirty years, three decades? What 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 is the matter with trucking today? Um, great and not enough experience. I mean, I, that's the only thing that I can say because they're assembly lining these truck drivers out here. The government is greedy, and so are the assembly lines. Oh, you broke up there for There's a second. There's no brotherhood. You you broke up you broke <laughs> up there for a second. What, repeat what you just said. I said greed and assembly line truck drivers. Mm, assemb- that's what's wrong with the industry. Assembly line truck man, you coming up with some with some sharp one. Uh, <laughs> With some one uh with some sharp one liners, man. What's what's up? What's <laughs> assembly line truck drivers? Talk to me. What 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 what's that about? Okay, so when I say assembly line truck driver, that's the ones that where they go in there for two weeks and they go out on the road. They just send them out there. They put them in the truck with a trainer. A trainer do not care. All they looking at is the money that they're gonna get because they're gonna be making more miles. So these drivers are not getting the experience that they actually need. So I call them assembly line truck drivers. Because I look at a lot of the new drivers that be on TikTok, and they're sitting up here saying that the truck or the older truck drivers is the reason why the industry is the way it is. Mm-hmm. No, the industry is the way it is because of you assembly line truck drivers. Mm-hmm. Your greed and your non-experience is the reason why this trucking industry is going to hell. 
Now you now by you saying that you 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 agree with uh, I, I'm 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 going to shout out my guy uh, DSS Drill Sergeant shout him out and my girl Cute Four Trucker shout her out so you agree that yeah. these these gurus on 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 the on the Instagram on the on the Facebooks that over here talking about I could get you into this industry. You pay me X amount of dollars and I could I could get you into this industry and all like that. You think there's way too many problems in that? Would would people over here try to hustle people into this industry? Yes, all they're doing is taking their money. They're they're not gonna give them the experience that they need. So you can put anybody in the industry, but the industry needs experience. Two weeks is not enough. So these people out here is taking these, these these young people's money because these young people, when the, what you call those, uh, recruiters go to these schools, a week, this is how much money you're going to make. That's the reason why there's a turnover so bad because these people are lying to these kids. Mm-hmm. They're just flat out lying, and it, it burns me up. I agree. I agree. I mean, it's... It's like before, you know, because you know, drill sergeant, he he was it's in his blood. It is it's this industry is in his blood. But as I, I as as I told him, as I told him, the the new millennials that's coming into this industry now, it's not in their mm-hmm. blood. They 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 only getting in this industry because they can't make the kind of money that the trucking industry produces. They can't make it at McDonald's. Correct. They can't make it at the warehouses. They can't make it at Amazon. This is the only mm-hmm. industry that's giving you about a grand more a week. And that's what they see. Correct. They don't care about Correct. nothing that. They, they don't care about nothing else. They don't care about the love. They they really don't. They 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 don't want to. These, these kids, man, I, I want to go out, you know, shake my ass every week at the club and all like that. They don't want to be away from that. They don't want to be away. They can't handle being away from they they family. Oh man, I'm seat. I'm 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 homesick. I'm pussy sick. Uh, uh you know, I I can't mm-hmm. see my girlfriend in for a month and all like that, man. These these mm-hmm. guys that's getting in this industry is 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 only coming in here just as you said in the beginning of our conversation. It's for a job now. That's it. Mm-hmm. Rules. A lot of the gurus is 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 getting over on them because they don't love it. Correct. Whew. What all they mean? see is money because they can fool these kids. That's all they see is money. All the kids see is the money that the gurus say that they're gonna get. Mm-hmm. And then once they get out here, they've already got their money. So when they get out, Oh, you just dropped completely off. I don't off. care about the job at all. Okay, re- repeat what you just said because my my bars just dropped completely off. Okay, so what I was saying was, when these gurus, as you're saying, is offering these kids or these older people, you know, a good job in the industry, so these people pay the gurus all of that money to get them in here, and then once they get in here, they're not making the money. Hence, there's like about three of newbies that's on TikTok. Well, this is not what they said it was gonna be like. Mm-hmm. Only making, only bringing home three and four hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, they got you. They got you. You have to do your research. You have to talk to other people. Just don't listen at one person saying how to get into the industry. That's the reason why when I talk on there, I tell them I said, listen, all of us is on here to help y'all newbies. All y'all got to do is just ask for the help we will teach you but no they want to listen at other people that prop that that probably yeah. might not have nothing to do with the industry ain't that a bitch correct <laughs> oh man man i am enjoying myself with you man thank you thank you thank you very much for coming on you are a citizen so if you ever want to conversate or anything like that, man, you got the number. You know how to get in contact with me. You know how to get it up and get it in. 30, I mean, three okay. decades in the game. Ice T, veteran driver, old school driver. You've seen it all. I mean, you've you seen it all and you've been through it all. 
you know, much, mm -hmm. you know, much, much blessings to you, man. I mean, you, 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 the type of woman that, that been through the mud and, and knows and, and knows where you at, man. I, I respect that much respect to you. Right. Thank you. Very welcome. You very welcome out of, uh, out of, you know, out of being in the industry for, for three decades in the game, man, what, what what can you, can you tell us what some of your favorite sites or or some of the favorite places that you that you might have encountered? Okay, my favorite would be North Dakota. Okay, I love it up there. Um, my second would be Miami. Okay, I love it down there. I love I love the sawgrass area. Okay. Love it. It's, it's just gorgeous. And then besides, the clothes are cheap down there. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so Louisiana proud. So you on your way back home. So I'm going to let you get back to trucking. I really do appreciate you okay, coming on the Lockout Men podcast show and chopping it up with me. Okay, not a problem, babe. But you want to be bad, you be a, 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 be